Welcome to the 38th annual Bounty of the Valley Scholarship Dinner. I'm David Wise, Vice President for Advancement here at Heritage. And for seven years now, I've been welcoming you into this space with exactly those words. That's who you are. That's how I think of you, as family. This is the Heritage family, and this is a celebration of an incredible community that defines Heritage University, a true family. Last week, I received an email from Rick Williams at the Johnson Scholarship Foundation with whom Heritage has a deep and trusted relationship. He addressed it, dear relatives. I have to tell you, at that moment, I felt very honored. I was a part of something, a collective partnership with the Johnson Scholarship Foundation. And when he addressed me that way, despite the fact that we're not related by blood or ethnicity or race, I felt honored to be a part of that family. We're all a part of something special, a common cause, such as we are, and we're all relatives. We are family. Now, I don't know how it is with your family. What family gets together, it's a family reunion, right? And at those reunions, well, there's always a few of our more colorful, colorful family members that we like to have a little fun with. And so we're gonna start with a little bit of that tonight. First of all, Ginger Hislop. The matriarch of the family. And at nearly 105 years, she's been keeping us all in line and towing the line for much of Heritage's history. And then Rick and Mary Jo, our beloved uncle and aunt. Wherever they go, a party is soon to follow. Wherever they gather, I want to be because it's going to be a party. Last week, I was visiting with my 97-year-old mother, and she said, David, next Saturday, by the way, hi, Mom. Uh, next Saturday is your big fundraiser. I said, fundraiser? You're right, it is a fundraiser because Rick and Mary Jo are going to be there, and that means it's always going to be fun. Then we've got um, Uncle Dick and Aunt, Aunt Pat. Such, such kind, good, generous counsel that I get from them routinely. Whenever things are not going quite right and I feel like I might be on the verge of an infarction, I call Dick. That's good medicine in every way. Thank you, Dick and Pat. You know, then we've got uh, Uncle Ken and Aunt Sharon. Where are they? They're always about two minutes from encouraging us all to get up and get out on the pitch and play a round of bubble soccer, and Ginger would be the first one in a bubble. I know it. <laughs> adventure is in their middle name. It's in their DNA. They create adventure here at Heritage, and they tow us all along with them. And then we've got great Uncle Kip and great Aunt Linda. Now, they don't get the great attribution because they're older than any of us or any of their other uh, aunts and uncles. They get the great because, well, frankly, they're great. But they've been at Heritage since day one, really since day zero. Aunt Linda balancing the books every month, making sure that we finished on the right side of the rule. And if they didn't, she'd bake a German chocolate cake, take it out into the fundraising community and raise enough funds till the books balanced again. <laughs> And then Great Uncle Kip, he keeps the ledger balanced for us in everything we do with the Yakima Nation. We count on his guidance every, every day, practically. So thank you, Great Uncle Kip and Great Aunt Linda. As with all family reunions, there are family members who couldn't make it tonight, but they're here with us in spirit. And many of them are with us online. Hi, Uncle Jack. Hi, Aunt Connie. I know you're watching, and we're so excited you're out there somewhere. All of us are relatives, sisters and brothers and cousins, who, though we may not see each other nearly as often as we would like, can be counted on in times of good and bad through thick and thin, and give every ounce of guidance, enthusiasm, and support that they can. Your dedication and support are the foundation upon which this family thrives. And so who's the next generation of relatives? Of course, it's our students, right? 
each of you here tonight contributes to this vibrant tapestry, creating a network of support for our students, investing in their futures. You and everyone here tonight, and those tuning in online and abroad, thank you for your unwavering support. Your presence is a testament to the strength and unity of the Heritage family. Together we create opportunities, nurture dreams, and build brighter futures for all our students. Let's take this moment to celebrate our collective impact and the incredible journey ahead. Thank you all for being here and for your continued dedication to Heritage University. It is now my pleasure to introduce our Masters of Ceremonies for this evening, Alex Vera and Gerardo Ruelas. You can read all about their many adventures and accomplishments in the program. Suffice it to say, they're both alums, they're both board members, they're both tip-top executives at Costco in Issaquah, and both are just tremendous people. It's my honor for the third year running to welcome to the podium, our MCs for this evening, Alex Barra and Gerardo Ruelas. Thank you. Surprise, they keep inviting us back. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah. Awesome. All right, we get this started. Hi, I'm Alex. Thank you guys for being here tonight. Um, it's, I'm, I'm so thrilled, and it's so it's such a fortune. It's so amazing for me to be sharing the stage here with my good friend here. He's been my friend forever. We've been here um, what 21 years, something like that. I don't want to really say how, how long ago, but i um, known him for a really long time, and uh, it's a pleasure to be sharing this stage with him today. Um, welcome to the 38th Annual Bounty of the Belly Scholarship Dinner. Woohoo! Hey, my name is uh, Gerardo. Alex, I think we should start by uh, talking about the arduous uh, process that every year we go through to match our outfits. And um, uh. <laughs> that usually involves showing up and seeing what happens. And uh, for the third year in a row, I show up and uh, my bow tie is matching uh, Alex's uh, yeah. dress. Yeah, total so. accident, really. He, I, I remember he said it on, on Friday. We were, uh, maybe Thursday, when we last saw each other in the office, because we also work together. Um, he says, you know, it's, it's going to be funny if, you, if we match again. And sure enough, we show up, he's in the parking lot. He's like, oh my god, look at my bow tie. He pulls it out, and it matches. Thank you. <laughs> I want to thank you all for uh, being here tonight. And uh, to everyone who's watching at home, like my two kids, Mateo and Iraiz, uh, hello. Hi, guys. Um, thank you for uh, tuning in. I feel uh, also privileged to be sharing the stage with such an incredible woman and my friend, uh, Alex. We hope that you enjoy the program that we prepare for you tonight. And uh, to kick us off, we would like to start by doing an acknowledgement to this beautiful land that Heritage uh, sits on. We would like to acknowledge that we are coming to you from the traditional lands of the first people of our valley, the 14 confederated tribes and bands of the Yakima Nation. And we honor with gratitude the land itself and the Yakima tribe. Heritage University is a home, is a home to multicultural student community. 11% of our students are of Native American background and 73% of our students are Hispanic. Additionally, 85% of our students are the first in their families to attend college. This is only possible because of our community coming together to help drive Heritage University's mission forward. We are all here because of that mission, which is to empower a multicultural and inclusive student body to overcome social, cultural, economic, and geographic barriers that limit access to higher education. You will hear from our students and how they, along with their families and peers, have overcome these barriers. Barriers that can take on the form of physical illness, poverty, working through childhood trauma, being a DACA student, coming from a native community, 
or living in fear of losing a family member to deportation. But our students are resilient and having tremendous potential. They have gone on to change our communities here in the Yakima Valley and the world. From teachers to school administrators to social workers, doctors, lawyers, and business professionals. The impact Heritage is having is tangible, and you will see that reflected in the stories of our students and alumni tonight. This past May, we celebrated our 42nd graduating class at Heritage. And we've award, yeah. Mm -hmm. 40 seconds. And we've awarded over 11,000 undergraduate and graduate degrees. But our students are not looking for a handout, but rather a hand up. While it may seem that these disadvantages and barriers that they face are too big to overcome, our students demonstrate remarkable resilience and face these challenges head on. 61% of them work at least one part-time job while they go to school. Many of them are parents and they have family responsibilities. But you can see their hard work pay off on commencement day. They swell with pride as they walk across that stage, many of them with their kids and babies at hand. And, it's, and that's what it means to be a Heritage graduate. It's a family achievement. And their family also becomes part of the Heritage family. And that is precisely why your presence tonight fills me with gratitude. By helping a student in their educational journey, you become an extension of that Heritage family. Your contribution transcends individual scholarship or students. It's an investment in enhancing our Yakima Valley, creating a brighter future for our students and their families. We'd like to say thank you for your generosity and continued support toward the students. Your gifts are truly gifts that keep on giving. They create ripple effects for generations to come. Many of you support the university through donations or at tonight's dinner. Many of you are employers to our students and overall supporters and cheerleaders of Heritage University and its mission. Tonight is our opportunity to come together and learn about these incredible students and share the bounty of our valley and to contribute to its future. And to those watching online, you can select the link that says raise your paddle. You can do it starting now, or you can wait until we raise our paddles here in this room. Your support is the fuel that powers these bright minds towards their dreams. Some of them dream of curing disease. Some of them dream of creating the next tech innovation. Some dream of making the Yakima Valley a better place. And some, I'm sure, just dream of a world where their laundry just magically falls itself. <laughs> I know that's one job, no one would mind if AI takes over. <laughs> and to kick off tonight's program, Alex and I want to share with you our story of Heritage University, the reason why we are here today, and the reason why we have such deep love and connection to this university. I've had the opportunity to be at this dinner a few times, and I've shared with you the impact tonight has had on my life and my family's life. Like many other students, my family immigrated and settled in the Yakima Valley, and I was born and raised here. It's a privilege for me to be here tonight and be the voice for those students. The summer I graduated from high school, I had a choice to make. I either continued working in the fields to make ends meet, or take a chance on some advice that was given to me by Patty. She was the recruiter for the College Assistant Migrant Program here at Heritage. She was offering me a scholarship and, and encouraging me to sign up or enroll for the fall semester. I was a young teen mom with dreams of attending college, but no means to pay for it. She assured me that education was the way to go and that Heritage University was the right place for me. Being the first to attend college in my family was a big step. Both of my parents have elementary education and I'm one of nine children. I had an infant to care for rent and bills. Well, I took the chance anyways, and Patty was right. Heritage understood me and welcomed me. I made, a, I made use of important resources, like the Early Learning Center, where I dropped off my eight-month-old so that I could attend classes. I also made use of the Academic Skills Center, 
where I spent like, countless hours with tutors and study groups. Through a grant by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, I had the opportunity to work on campus. The more time I spent on campus, the more I became involved in extracurricular activities. I became a student ambassador for the CAMP program, the CAMP program that recruited me, where I helped students navigate through the enrollment process and uh, adjust to life in, on campus. I also became the president of Students in Free Enterprise, SIFE, formerly known, a student organization that focused on creating positive changes in the community. I had a great support system composed of professors and committed staff who knew me by name and guided me every step of the way. I feel a deep appreciation for, and gratitude for the students, or sorry, for the students as well, but for the many donors and sponsors that sponsored my education that without knowing me, gave me a chance and gave me so much. My son that was once eight months old and I uh, brought to Heritage is now a graduate of the University of Washington and has moved on, thank you. <laughs> He's moved on to pursue a career in the architecture field, so I'm really proud of him. <laughs> so tonight is incredible. It's incredibly important because you truly are creating generational change through the support to our students. So thank you. Thank you, Alex, for uh, sharing your story. Um, I am not supposed to share that we've been friends for over 21 years. She said it earlier, <laughs> but I think it's mainly because it kind of betrays that she may not be as young as she looks. And, so, um, and I, I, you know, I do feel uh, very uh, honored to be part of Alex's journey, and I've had the privilege of calling her family for many, many years. Her kids uh, have grown up together, um, and her friendship, along with others, is one of the many reasons why heritage, um, and it's important and I'm grateful uh, that I had the opportunity to be here for that experience. Um, with those 21 years of friendship, there's also many stories I can tell. And I am also not supposed to tell you about the time when Alex forgot her own name. Uh, in an introduction to a group of students, uh, she said, hi, I'm Brenda. <laughs> And our friend Brenda said, no, 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 you're Alex, I'm Brenda. And she said, yes, 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 I'm Alex. So I am glad we, uh, we didn't forget our name today, Alex. Yeah, you don't seem to forget that one. No. I was born and raised in a rural town in the mountains of uh, central Mexico. My family migrated here to the Yakima Valley when I was 15 years old. We worked in seasonal farms for many years and like many families, uh, we live paycheck to paycheck. It was truly a family effort for me to come to Heritage. I didn't quite qualify for financial aid at the time, and my family could not help me pay for school. I had to work one or multiple uh, part-time jobs all the way through my senior year. My family helped me with my expenses at home, and they also helped me by not asking me to contribute to the home while I lived there. My uh, brother David, um, who is a sponsor in this event and was supposed to be here, um, uh, also helped me uh, as he started off his own business at the time. I told him that even though he's not here, I have his paddle and I am making use of that. <laughs> <laughs> my Heritage family, they understood both my need and my potential. They helped me navigate scholarships both here at Heritage University and about every other scholarship that I could get my hands on elsewhere. The faculty and the staff were such an integral part of that support system. I felt like they truly care about me as a person. Class would sometimes stay in late at 9 p.m. and I would have questions just because I'm a very curious person. And so one of our professors, Charo Cruz, would entertain those questions. And I know he watches this event every night from home. Uh, so hi, Charo. Um, <laughs> And last time I was here uh, doing this event, the security person, his name is Joseph, said, hey, I remember you. I used to let you and Charo out late so, so much because you guys would stay here and we would lock the building. And so that just goes to tell you to the lengths to which the faculty and the staff here at Heritage go to ensure that we have a, a good quality education. Um, and like him, there are many others from Heritage that I now consider lifelong friends. And that is what makes Heritage so special to me. When I graduated in 2007, as I walked across that stage, I felt the wind of support behind me. 
That wind was made of my parents, my brothers and my sister, my friends, my professors, the staff at Heritage, and people like you, supporters and friends of Heritage University, that made that dream possible. As we come together tonight, we are the wind that propels these students forward in their education towards their dreams. When you raise your paddle, please know that it's not just a number or, an, or a donation. These are real lives that you are changing. You change my life. You are the wind behind the proverbial wings of our students here at Heritage University. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your story, Gerardo. And now, I would like to introduce, introduce to you someone who needs no introduction. She is one of the founders of the university and a lifelong friend, relentless advocate of our students. She inspired and showed me what it meant to give back to the community and to Heritage in particular. Please help me welcome our very own legend, Dr. Kathleen Ross. <laughs> Well, I am honored that I've been asked to share a blessing prayer at this amazing gathering, uh, enjoying our 38th scholarship dinner together. So I invite all of us to open our hearts to the gratitude and blessings we are all experiencing this evening. So please join me in prayer. Our loving creator, Tonight, we thank you for the abundance of good things filling our lives each day, the bountiful food raised here in our valley, the beauty of the mountains and the natural environment that we get to enjoy, and the abundance of resources we're so privileged to have and share. Tonight, we are asking you to bless the wonderful food and drink we are enjoying. Amazing and bless especially those who planned and prepared it for us. Bless too those who planted or nurtured or harvested what we're enjoying tonight. Our loving God, we also ask you to bless those who could not be with us in person tonight, but are with us in spirit and through technology, who are adding their kind thoughts and generosity from afar. And most especially tonight, we ask you <clears throat> to, for your continued guidance and inspiration that has inspired us at Heritage to be a place where a new future is being created. Bless each of the generous donors who are with us tonight, supporting our talented, community-minded, persevering students. Loving Creator, Give each of us here tonight, our donors, our faculty, our staff, our students, give each of us hearts filled with joy at seeing what is being accomplished. Renew all of our hearts with courage and generosity so we can each continue embracing our contributions that are creating the future of our valley and of our country. As we watch the success of our students in the months to come, bless each of us with a deep sense of partnership, of being relatives, of having solidarity with our students and with our staff as we all make our communities and our earth a better place for future generations. Thank you. For all this guidance, our loving creator, we count on your continued blessing, and we pray with gratitude in your holy name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ross, for such a wonderful uh, blessing. And Thank you for your continued support to our students at Heritage. She deserves another round of applause. <laughs> she
she asks that you open your hearts, David will ask you to open your wallets here. In the <laughs> As mentioned earlier, Alex and I are both on the board of directors here at Heritage University. Our job at the board is to be stewards of the university and its mission. Our board is made up of an incredible group of people who give their time and resources to continue to make dreams happen here at Heritage. Now I would like to recognize all of our board members. Would all existing uh, board members at the university please stand? <laughs> would all past board members also please stand to be recognized? So we have Rick, and he may have just stepped out. We have Ken. We would also like to recognize the following elected and appointed officials who are with us tonight. Please hold your applause till the end. As I call your name, would you please stand? Curtis King, Senator. Christopher Corey, State Representative. Bree Blackhorse, Assistant United States Attorney to Eastern Washington. Honorable Judge Rebecca Pinnell. Sonia Rodriguez True, Yakima Superior Court Judge. If there are any elected officials that I have missed, uh, could you please stand and let's give them a round of applause. We would also like to recognize all of our student ambassadors who are here tonight. Could all of the student ambassadors please stand up? All of our students. Thank you guys so much. Well, we have, we've introduced elected officials but now we have an honor, we have the honor of another special introduction. The presentation of a monarch. To do so, I'd like to call up uh, Bob, Her Bob Gertz, who's the chairman of the Board of Directors for Heritage. Kyle, you want to stand up and be recognized? I, you know, I felt bad. To, but. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed guests, and cherished colleagues, my name is Bob Gerst, and I am Vice President of Human Resources at John I. Haas, and I'm the chairperson of the Board of Directors at Heritage University. Tonight, as we gather in celebration of Heritage University students, we also want to honor and express our deepest gratitude to an extraordinary individual whose tireless dedication has transformed heritage in countless ways. 13 years ago, Dana Eliason stepped onto our campus with, with its classrooms and administrative areas made up of portable trailers. And through her unwavering commitment vision and boundless energy, she has helped shape heritage into the thriving institution we see before us today. As you arrive tonight, you witness one of Dana's many remarkable and invaluable achievements, the new child care center. This treasured addition, six years in the making, stands as a genuine tribute to Dana's remarkable ability to cultivate partnership and secure support for initiatives that benefit our faculty, our students, and the broader community. From day one, Dana was tasked with the monumental ta responsibility of developing an expanded base of donors for, for Heritage University. And in her free time, organizing the annual scholarship dinner which was, at the time, the most critical local funding source of the school. Really, no pressure there. <laughs> In her creative and capable hands, what was a modest fundraising effort has flourished into a bounty 
of generosity and hope. The numbers alone are irrefutable. From raising $150,000 in that first year to an astounding $873,000 last year, Dana's impact has been nothing short of transformational. That is why we approach this year's event. We have every reason to anticipate yet another thrilling success, surpassing even that milestone, especially as it marks Dana's final year with Heritage. So as we come together tonight, let's not only celebrate Dana's remarkable accomplishment, but also pledge to make this year's event her most successful yet. Let's surpass all expectations and leave a legacy of generosity that will inspire others for years to come. Let's raise those paddles high and often. Your contribution tonight isn't just a donation, it's an investment in a brighter future for countless students who are in need. Each year, Dana's keen personal eye for beauty and her deep affection for our agriculture roots did you, by the way, happen to see the hops growing out there? I just want to make sure that everyone saw in terms of, it's very important to me that um, are, are reflected in the art she selects for the, the invitations, showcasing the stunning landscape of a valley and created by local artists. Her upbringing as a farm girl, AKA Dana from Montana, <laughs> instilled in her an exceptionally strong work ethic, graceful resilience, and the deep, deep value of loyal friendships, all qualities that have sustained her through life's challenges, and that has brought her success in her career and endeared her to all who have the honor and the privilege in knowing her. In her retirement, Dana will greatly miss both the students who are the heart and soul of Heritage University and our incredible donors. She has seen the transformative effect our institution has on students and their lives, guiding and cheering them on as they pursue their dreams. Equally, Dana's warmth and compassion have forged lasting relationships with our donors, offering them comfort and joy through all of life's challenge. Rod, we extend our heartfelt thanks to you for your unwavering support of Deanna through her tenure at Heritage. Your partnership has been invaluable and we are grateful for your dedication to our shared mission. We also want to thank Deanna's son, Walker, and his wife, Karen, as well as we want to say hello maybe they're on the uh, TV, to the grandkids, <laughs> Ellie and Jack. In closing, your legacy at Heritage, Dana, and make no mistake, you are leaving a legacy, is one of dynamic inspiration, stylish presentation, active compassion, and unwavering dedication. You've touched countless lives, leaving an indelible mark on our institution in our hearts. As you step into this new chapter of your life, be assured that your spirit is woven tightly, beautifully into the fabric of heritage, guiding us forward with the same grace and determination that have defined your tenure here. Now I'd like to have Rick Pinnell and Dana come up, uh, join me up here. Uh, you, as many of you know, Rick was instrumental in getting Danny here 13 years ago, and I thought it was fitting he joins me here tonight in his presentation. Dana, to spotlight your spirit being tightly woven into the fabric of Heritage University through your dedication to our students and donors, we are proud to present you with this Yakima Nation blanket.
hope that when you look at this in the future, you are reminded of your Heritage University family. So once again, please join me in offering a resounding, grateful round of applause for Dan Eliason as we wish her joyous and fulfilling retirement. <laughs> So moving. Uh, Bob, uh, as we were uh, getting ready, he said, don't take my notes. And so I was very tempted to take the notes. So I would like some credit for not uh, having been a mischievous. <laughs> now, for those of you who are in this room, we're gonna practice our paddle racing skills. They're in your envelopes. So if you can all get your envelope. Everybody should have an envelope with their name on it yeah. at your table. So we are going to start with the basics. So now that everyone has their number. Everybody yes. have one? We can get All you right. one or we can get you another. <laughs> okay. I know it's just a number on paper, but tonight this is your voice, it's your commitment, and it's your power to make a difference. On the count of three, I want you to raise your, your uh, paddle just so that we can practice. Ready? One, two, three. There we go. Everywhere. Uh, no, I missed some. Yeah, I'm missing a lot of paddle. Let's try that again. One, two, three. There Woo. we go. Much better. Now, I did say we're going to learn. So now we're going to practice on form. It's not just about height. It's about elegance. And so imagine that you're on the cover of some magazine and you hold your paddle with grace and you smile and you project confidence. Rick, will you please show us how it's done? <laughs> Woo! There we go. Well, I'm glad, Mary Jo, you did it because I'm not sure Rick would have done uh, the job. You're a natural. I think Alex was also gonna tell you a joke about how uh, Bob just embarrassed me here a few minutes ago. I said, oh, look, she said, look at these hops. And I said, oh. what, you can't recognize a grape? I don't know. A grape I know. I, and, I, and I said, no, that's hops. And, and so she came very subtly and, and said, said they, they were hops. hops. Yes. They were hops. <laughs> so thank you. And, let's see, uh, so now, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you the third president of Heritage University, who is attending now his seventh scholarship dinner. Dr. Anderson has been the president of Heritage University since 2017. Heritage has grown and thrived in his leadership. Please help me welcome Dr. Andrew Sund. Uh, thank you, Alex and uh, Gerardo. Um, it's, it's really great to be here tonight. What a wonderful evening and what great recognition for Dana, which we will be doing many more in the next few weeks for, for all the work she's done uh, for us over the years. Uh, very grateful, very grateful for all your presses. I'd like to begin with something a bit off script. Um, Alex and Gerardo talked a little bit about matching outfits uh, when, when they were here. And you know, uh, earlier on, you, you met, many of you know him forever, David Wise, some of you met him. David and I work together every day. And we did not plan this, but David, you and I, stand up. <laughs> We're almost, almost the same. We, <laughs> we, we did not, that was not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're. Yeah, we've been, and uh, you know, it's, uh, I don't know how that works. It's just work together for so long, things that start coming together. Uh, you know each other for so long. Um, I, it's, 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 as Alex mentioned, it's my seventh scholarship dinner. It's my seventh year as president of Heritage. By the way, how much time did you give me tonight? <laughs> Five minutes? <laughs> Thank you very much. No. Um, it's, um, um, 
it, it, it's never, it's not easy to express what a privilege I feel to be part of this institution, to have the privilege of leading Heritage University. It's such a fantastic mission, such an important mission, and such a needed mission that uh, for me it's always an honor. And we have about 150 or so staff and faculty at Heritage that uh, I'm very proud to work with them every day uh, in a variety of tasks. I mean, we, we have faculty, we have advisors, we have uh, admissions office, we have a, um, a facilities crew, we have all kinds of people, the business office, the accountants, everybody works uh, here for the same reason. We all believe in the mission of this institution. And, and for me, it's, it's, just, it's, it's just an honor uh, to be part of that. And um, I liked about 150 people. Not many are here tonight, but we do have a few staff and faculty that are present. Could you stand up and be recognized as you represent all the other ones that are not here tonight? <laughs> Thank you, thank you for that. Um, this is always a very important evening and you are all family to Heritage because you get it. You are people that get why we are here, why we're in this valley. You get it for two reasons, many more than that, but at least two that I'm gonna focus on tonight. One is you understand the importance of value of higher education. And secondly, you understand that that needs support for people to be successful. Uh, in terms of the importance of higher education, you probably heard that that's not a given nowadays. Many people wonder if higher education has value or not. Usually those people have degrees themselves <laughs> and want their children to get degrees too, but they still question. And, uh, and you know that in this valley, we really need many more professionals. We need people to work in healthcare. We need people to work in education. We need people to be work in government and business. And you know what? And there's a few of them here tonight. We also need lawyers uh, in central Washington. Uh, I know, could be controversial, but no, we, we, do, we do need lawyers in central Washington. And Heritage was created with that purpose. Heritage was created with the purpose of providing quality higher education for the people of this valley, the people who live in the Yakima Nation and around it, who are the ones that are gonna be the professionals in the future? Is the students of Heritage University the people that are gonna be taking over the jobs of many of us in the future, people that are right now in this institution? And we need to have many more of them. And additionally, as I mentioned, you also get it because you get that the, the project of Heritage University needs support. There are many programs that support students in the United States and in the state of Washington, and we value them. There's grants from the federal government that help with tuition. There's grants from the state government that help with tuition. But that doesn't cover everything, and actually every year it kind of covers less. Uh, and, and it's the private support that we provide through you at this institution that allow us to provide what I always say is the best financial aid packages in the state of Washington, maybe the nation, but I'm gonna be careful not to claim too much. But here we truly allow everybody that has a need, a financial need, will find a way for them to be able to attend school. And that's thanks to your support. So this is no more small thing. And, and Gerardo and Alex said it, and David said it, and Bob and all. Yes, this, when you raise your paddle, it's really not about the money. It's changing people's lives. And it's generational change. I always, just like Gerardo says, I always love hearing Alex's story too, about how she came here and Heritage changed her life, and now her son is a graduate of the University of Washington. It's, it's the, the whole family has been transformed thanks to the opportunities uh, that, uh, that uh, Heritage provides. And she's not alone. It's, there's many, many, many people that have gone through the same process at Heritage University, so thank you for your support. And what we do is try to provide or excel at providing uh, excellence in higher education. How do we do that? And I'm gonna end just about now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, end, I'm gonna end very soon, I promise. Uh, uh, but we are always trying to be innovative. We're always trying to bring new degrees, do new things. Last year, I briefly mentioned two new master's degrees that we 
are, uh, that we were beginning to think about. Now we are gonna launch them this fall, they're ready, a master's in mental health counseling and a master's in social work, highly needed in our region. <laughs> Additionally, uh, we're also uh, about to launch, getting ready to launch a, an important uh, program that's gonna be what we call RN to BSN. There's <laughs> Some people get it, others might not. Uh, RN are registered nurses. It's, it's a one way of becoming a nurse, but the BSN is a higher level degree. There's many RNs that could really use the additional learning and training to reach that next level and become more important health providers in, in, all, their, in all the systems that we, we have in the Yakima Valley and that we need. So we're moving forward with that program too. And you may have heard about how technology is changing everything and artificial intelligence and, and uh, chat GPT writing students' papers. We worry about those things and we, we think about it and we work with it. But some exciting things that we're doing at Heritage is for example, we have a project with Amazon that is Help Fund where we are developing a robot that's gonna be a tour guide at the Yakima Nation Cultural Center, the museum. It's gonna provide uh, uh, information. And also uh, Alexa now has, and I'm not gonna explain this very well, but Alexa has like a news update that you can ask a weekly one in Ishishking about what's going on in the Yakima Nation. So we're embracing changes in technology and make them feel part, and you can get it in English too if, if you want to, but uh, 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 it's, it's, we're embracing these technological changes at Heritage so that they can benefit our community, benefit our people. Um, and uh, finally, I want to mention that we will continue talking about lawyers. We will continue to support a program now that we've had for two years. It's going to be the third year now. The summer uh, LSAC program is what we call it. Which is, it's a, a, a program where we provide uh, different types of activities for students that are thinking about law school. Uh, and uh, one of the reasons we do that, it was launched because we all fully understand that there is a need for additional legal work in this area and it's difficult to recruit attorneys in central Washington. We want to create our own. We want to create people from this community that are committed to the community. And this is the beginning. A law school is way too big for Heritage University right now. You never know in the future, but right now it's way too much. But we are collaborating with the three law schools in the state of Washington and we're going to be providing more and more opportunities for people to be able to advance in collaboration with the other schools, not, not on our own. We cannot, we cannot open a law school here, but we will be uh, having those opportunities for, um, uh, for our students uh, and our graduates and other people from the community. Uh, I like to mention one challenge that you may have read about and uh, that we have struggled this year with. All universities have struggled. I don't know if you've heard about the FAFSA. The FAFSA is the free form that uh, uh, people need to use to apply for financial aid at every university. The federal government launched a new one, and there's been all kinds of glitches during this year that is causing severe, severe issues for all institutions. And the reason I bring it up is because I want you to know, as supporters of Heritage, that we're aware of it, we're working on it, and we're coming with strong and innovative ways to deal with that and make sure that our students will be able to get all the financial aid they need and deserve in order to fulfill their dreams of achieving a degree, a higher education degree. We will work with that to make sure that um, nobody's left behind during this very difficult year that all institutions are suffering with. It's not just her heritage. So having said all that, uh, Heritage University is a very special place. And many of you have been here for years and years and years. This is your 20th, 38th maybe for some of you uh, scholarship dinner. Some of you maybe are here for the first time. And I do hope, those of you that are here for the first time, that you really take a look around, look at all the other people that support Heritage, look at our staff and faculty, meet our ambassadors, our student ambassadors, so that when you leave tonight, you leave with a little bit of Heritage in your hearts. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sun, for uh, such inspiring words and for your continued leadership at the university. 
Um, we do put in the program five minutes for Dr. San, and he now knows we secretly allocate 10. And so there's a reason why Alex and I were not in the side. We went and sat down while we went. And sat down. We always give him a hard time. He's very passionate about the university. And now for one of my favorite parts of this night, I would like to welcome a special guest, Heritage University student, Lily Wesley. Lily, will you come up to the stage, please? <laughs> Lily is an enrolled Yakima who was born and raised in the Yakima Valley. She graduated from Toppenish High School in 2019 and started her college career at Heritage the following fall. She completed research experiences every summer that she was here in her, under, in her uh, biology undergraduate degree, and you're gonna hear all about that from Lily. So please, let's give her another round of applause. Thank you. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes. Okay, already. Oh. How about there, better? Already. Nyech <laughs> Klawit. Ink nash winiksha maili kushiapo timki lily wesley nishaikin hash topinish pa my ithla iwa elarina black melitsa iwa jessica wesley good evening my traditional name is maili and my english name is lily wesley and i was born and raised in topinish and my mother is elarina black and my younger sister is jessica wesley I am an enrolled member of the Yakima Nation and I am super excited to be standing here today. In spring of 2019, I felt nervous, excited, and scared as they called my name as I walked across that storied stage to graduate from Toppenish High School. My heart skipped a beat as they announced I had gotten the full circle scholarship to Heritage University. This scholarship covered up to six years of full paid tuition and was valued at over $140,000. According to my mom, everyone in the stands gasped, and all I could do was turn bright pink and numbly shake the hands of the staff on stage as I was handed my diploma. I couldn't believe it. Growing up, college was always encouraged, but I can remember the times when my kethla, my grandma, would encourage me to continue in school all the way throughout college. And at the time, I was thinking, sure, no problem, college is a lifetime away, I've got time. Unfortunately, she passed away in January of 2011. I was just 10 years old. At the time, I was so young and I didn't quite understand the impact of her words. After her passing, we had discovered that she had set aside special beads in the hope of one day that I would use them. And as I walked across that stage to graduate Heritage University with a Bachelor's of Science in Biology, I carried a piece of my kefla. She was with me in my regalia. As my mom had beaded the border of my cap using my, sorry, using my kefla's special beads. But, <laughs> but I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me share my journey here at Heritage with you all. In fall of 2019, I was super excited to start my first semester here at Heritage University. And fall, I was a part of a small team that was tasked with identifying 16 samples of invertebrates from creeks and rivers throughout our Yakima Valley. I was so excited as I complete my first ever internship, but soon my excitement was overshadowed as spring of 2020 came around. And I'm sure all of us in the room has been impacted in some form or another as the COVID-19 pandemic shook the country. Transitioning from in-person to virtual classes was something I had never expected. It proved to be challenging for someone like me whose skills and technology are limited. However, during that time, I was still able to secure a summer internship at the Yakima Nation Tribal School in the Environmenters program. I also worked as interning at the United States Department of Agriculture in Wapato. At the Tribal School, I worked with students over Zoom and we explored the local urban forest, which included the migration of skunks, raccoons, and of course, the occasional misplaced cat. At the USDA, I researched the effects of the beet curly top virus amongst potato plants. Although I will say the internship at the USDA made me realize lab work was not my forte. <laughs> Once in-person classes resumed, I truly got to experience some of the greatest moments of my life. Within the time frame of about a year and a half, 
I traveled to and from Oklahoma, Costa Rica, and our nation's capital in Washington, DC. In the spring of 2022, I had the privilege to be a part of a team to go on a trip to Tulsa, Oklahoma for the National Tribal Air Quality Forum. For this conference, we partnered with the Environmental, Environmental Protections Agency to bring awareness to the levels of PM pollution. PM pollution stands for particulate matter, which could be found in the ashes of wildfires and agricultural burning, which is, happens a lot around here. I really enjoyed this experience, but I will say a word of advice. When traveling to Oklahoma, don't request the 26th floor during tornado season. <laughs> the view is beautiful, but it's definitely scary when they go over the intercom with the tornado warning. A few short months after returning home from Oklahoma came the second biggest moment of my college career. I was selected to join a small research team on a trip to Costa Rica. This was my first time leaving the country, and I was so scared, nervous, and excited all at the same time. In Costa Rica, we had the honor of exploring 100 plus acres of untouched forest land that the local natives so graciously allowed us to conduct research. As a group, we all completed different projects. I completed a project on spiders and why they decided to make their webs in specific locations. And the highlight of this trip, well, you know, of course, besides leaving the US and visiting another country, was finding a spider web as huge as me. And I mean, it was like literally this big. Good thing though, I did not see that spider, otherwise I would have been on the next flight home. <laughs> a fun fact about me is I am terrified of spiders. <laughs> the next stop on my journey took me to Washington DC, and I was fortunate enough to be selected amongst hundreds of student applicants to the National Institutes of Health Summer Internship Program. I was placed into the Health Disparities in Tribal Communities Program, where I had the honor of shadowing my mentor, Dr. Abdullah al Qatani who specialize in patients with spinal bulbular muscular atrophy, SBMA, and amyotrophic lateral sclerosis 4, ALS 4. Yes, you guys should have seen the look on my face when my mentor brought up and showed me his poster on that first day. Ooh, it was interesting. Anyways, both SBMA and ALS 4 are neurological muscle degeneration diseases for which, unfortunately, there is no cure. In my free time outside of work, I was able to spread my wings and explore all of what DC had to offer. I had an amazing view in the National Mall as I watched the fireworks splash across the 4th of July. I enjoyed the many, and there was so many, museums that even with the span of two months, I wasn't able to visit them all. As for the future, I hope to someday be a physician. I would love to specialize in working with children. I want to be the reason why children are not afraid to see a doctor. I want to be that bridge between healthcare and the community my community. I hope to be an inspiration to all, especially Native youth, that even though the road is tough, you can get through those barriers. You can break that stereotype, because I broke that stereotype. But until I get that little MD at the back of my name, I wish to gain experience in the healthcare field. I already have my foot in the door as I am a volunteer at Pacific Northwest University of Health Sciences in Terrace Heights. Come summer, I'll be working with our high school internship program that exposes youth to careers in the medical field. And come this fall, I'll be working on getting my EMT certification program, where I plan to serve my community as a first responder. After all these experiences here, I am so beyond grateful for the opportunities that Heritage has provided me. I stand here today as a first generation college graduate. I can now say I am a proud product of the first full circle scholarship. Before this scholarship, I had planned on packing up and heading to Boise, Idaho, where I can complete a certificate program. But with this scholarship, I was not only able to get a good education, but also be a part of so many experiences that have shaped me to be who I am today. I've always been kind of a bit of an introvert. I never really liked to talk much. But coming to Heritage really got me out of my shell. Aside from the internships that I've completed, I was also able to serve as a secretary, as well as the vice president for the Heritage University Native American Club, a member of the American Indigenous Business Leaders of Heritage, and more recently, the Student Governments Association's Chair of Leadership. I had, had I gone elsewhere, I don't think I would have had the opportunities that I would have had at Heritage, and for that, I am thankful. Although the path to graduating wasn't always easy, as there were times where life threw curveballs, 
times where I think I didn't have the strength to finish my education. But with the help of the Lord and my family, I can finally say, I did it. I'd like to thank again all the generous donors that have brought, provided me with this opportunity. Kathla, the last 13 years without you have been tough, but I'll continue to make you proud. Atawi Shamash, I love you. But I'm not the only student who wanted to thank you for your commitment to Heritage University. Here are a few other recent graduates to tell you a little bit more about their journey and the impact you've made on their lives. Thank you. My name is Yesenia Garcia. I am a student here at Heritage University. I am a senior and I'm studying elementary education. My junior year of high school, I went to a college fair and I had told my mom about it, but I don't know if I'd ever go to college. She was like, Yesenia, what do you mean you're not going to college? And she was like, you can if you try hard. And I was like, oh, okay, I guess I can try. And the month that I had applied to Heritage University is the month that she passed away. And that was the moment where I was like, I'll try. I'll try even more. Hello, my name is Israel Bancourt. I am a senior here at Heritage University. I am a double major in criminal justice and history. And I am from Outlook, Washington. Growing up, I was very accustomed to agriculture and uh, being around agriculture. I would help my parents as I got older with some, you know, farm work. I think that really taught me a lot about the character and hard work. And I think all those things really influenced me and uh, provided a good foundation for me. My name is Marisol Johnson. I'm a senior here at Heritage University and I'm majoring in social work, minoring in psychology and getting certified for mental illness and substance abuse counseling. I was 20 years old when I became a single mom. I was living at the woman's shelter with my daughter. I didn't have anything in my name or to my name. And during that time, I was already going through my prereqs. So I continued that. I just put myself out there. I was with my family up until I would say middle school. Um, and at that point we became homeless and we were living in tents next to the Columbia River. There were like six of us, you know, living in these two little tents and we were just living to live. Um, and yeah, so pretty much up until that point and then finally I just decided I didn't want to live this way. So that's when I started to couch hop. My parents' education, I think, was cut off at around primary school. You know, I had some educational talent, right? And I think they really noticed that and really um, encouraged me to, to say, hey, you know, uh, make sure you take advantage of these talents that you have, these opportunities that you have. It was so important for me to keep moving as hard as it was because I didn't want to live at a minimum wage paycheck. Like, I saw what that did. Um, for my ex-husband at the time. And so I, I knew that whether I went to school or if I didn't, the time was going to pass. And it's way more beneficial to invest and struggle than not do anything at all. My faith journey started at a church in White Swan. Through going to church there, I met this lovely couple and they were starting a screen printing business. I just asked them, I said, can I come see like what your print shop is all about? And they were like, oh, we'd love for you to come see it. We'll pick you up tomorrow morning. And they picked me up and they hired me on the spot. Like they just kind of saw something it like a drive in me to work. And I just started working for them. And then in that year that I had known them, that's when my mother passed away. 
And the day that my mother passed away, they said, Yesenia, how about you come live with me? Because I was still couch hopping. I consider them my family, and I have not left them. What caught my attention about Heritage University is that it's local, right? And I think that it's invested in the Yakima Valley. Um, that caught my eye because I didn't want to eventually live here and establish a family here and, uh, you know, put roots down in this area, right? Most of my family is here, most of my friends. I think there's a lot of potential in this area. So it was a, like a year of being um, a single mom. And so my husband and I met. Um, he's a nurse at Memorial Hospital. And we, we just, we hit it off. I don't really know how to describe it, but became an instant family, and uh, it's been wonderful. My goal right now is to teach in the community where I grew up, so I like to say that this degree isn't for me, it's for my community and for my family. I'm getting this degree so I can help love and care on these children that need it, and I'm ready for it. I think finances were a big concern for, for my family and, and myself. And my parents were very frank with me saying, we cannot necessarily pay for your education, but we can encourage you, provide you support, uh, push you, motivate you to uh, develop your talents and go out there and do the best that you can. So I applied to several scholarships and one of the scholarships that I was offered uh, was the SOAR scholarship from Heritage University. And that, I think, was a game changer for, for myself and my family. I think it took a huge burden off my shoulders that I, I can finally focus on my education. Coming here and being a student has been the most incredible decision that I could have ever made. A full-time parent, full-time employee, and a full-time student, it's a lot to juggle. My proudest moment is that my daughter's been able to watch me do it. And so education to her is important because she sees her mom doing it. And I think that's probably the biggest gift. Well, after a seven year journey, I am finally graduating. Today's uh, commencement, graduation, May 11th. <laughs> Well, today I'm graduating. I'm so excited. Um, I'm graduating with an elementary education degree. After graduation, I'll be heading to Gonzaga Law School in the fall. I think law is one of the professions where you can, uh, you can make a real impact on people's lives, and I wanted to be able to uh, give back to my community in that way. Scholarships meant the world for me and my family to get me to this point. Without them, most likely would have not pursued higher education. Scholarships were extremely important for me to be able to pursue my edu educational dreams and, uh, and achieve them, th thankfully, so very important. I feel like scholarships helped me get here today. Without them, I definitely would not be graduating today. I almost feel like a scholarship was given to me and I was able to just create like uh, a degree out of it and I'm so excited to finally get it today. <laughs> Thank you so much for your heartfelt, thoughtful donations and contributions to Heritage University to help fund higher education for students like myself. I'd like to take today to give a thank you, a very warm, heartfelt thank you to all the donors of Heritage University for making this, uh, this dream a reality. And so from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Thank you so much for your generosity and your kindness to give. Without you, I would not be here today, so thank you so much. Just three weeks ago, we celebrated the 42nd commencement of Heritage University. Nearly 200 graduates crossed the stage that glorious Saturday morning teachers and nurses and social workers, our future business and civic leaders. Their undergraduate college career ended that day. But guess what? Their college career started right here, in this very room. It's thanks to you that they were able to fulfill their dreams and cross that stage on that Saturday morning. We've again arrived at that moment. 
the time to raise the paddle for scholarships that support remarkable students like Lily, Yesenia, Israel, and Marisol. And they are remarkable, but they are not unique. Every heritage student has a story worthy of being told. Every heritage student will go forth from this place transformed. They will do good and great things that will lift us all. And they will make this place we live the better for it. In no small part, thanks to you. When the spirit moves you, as Gerardo said, hold that paddle hall and with grace and charm. Once I have read your number, feel free to put it down. Students from around the room, as well as Dana, will be raising the paddle for people who couldn't be here with us this evening. And people online can raise the paddle in real time and their gifts will be tallied alongside yours. So then, Dana, are we ready? We're ready. I think we're we ready. are. Who would like to start the paddle raise this evening for Heritage Student Scholarships at $50,000? Dan, number 117. And number 119. And number 130 in the very back. Wow, three paddle raises at the height of $50,000. to our next level at $25,000. Who here can raise the paddle for $25,000 for Heritage Student Scholarships? Back in the corner, number 136. <laughs> number 298, boy, a cluster right here. Number 134, number 203, and number 219. Thank you so very much. There's another one, number 300, right here, another late game changer. Now we're at $20,000 for Heritage Student Scholarships. Are there any at 20? Elaine Blue, number 108. Back in the corner, number 281. Right here, Mimi 147, thank you so much. Okay, moving on at $15,000. The paddles go up, the students get scholarships, number 174, number 152, number 298, back to this side, number 195. Any others? Now we're at that magical number of $10,000. Who here can raise the paddle? Number 197. $10,000, thank you. Number 294, number 108, again. Number 297, number 280, 222, 133, and 154. All in at 10,000, woo! We're now at the $5,000 paddle race level. And let me tell you something a little special about 5,000. 5,000 supports one student for one full year of education. That's the average gap that we look to fill for a Heritage student. So $5,000 supports a student for an entire year at Heritage. Who here can raise the paddle for $5,000? Number 207. Look at all the paddles going up. Number 113. Number 283. And 285, 176, 291, 299, coming across 288, 231, 163, 227, 286, and 279. Did I miss anybody? Woo! Now at the $2,500 level, who here can raise the paddle at $2,500? Number 125. Number 182. Number 121. Number 194. Number 104. 135. 298. 138. 240. 
291 and 191. Woo! Now we're at the $1,500 marker. Who here is able to raise the paddle for Heritage Student Scholarships for $1,500? Right off the bat, number 155. Number 284, again, a two-fisted paddle raise back there, 237 and 296, 301, 201, 177, 186, and 290. Did I get them all in? Thank you. Oh, a late breaker, 156, back in the back corner. <laughs> 1500 that was 15000 that's right, Bob said it. We're now at the $1,000 marker. So here we go, all up for $1,000 for Heritage University students. Way back in the back, 281196, a big cluster over here, 287, 143, 259, 142, 256, 139, 189, 282, 157, 128, 140, 210, 292, 289, 393, and 279. Here we go, at $500, who can raise the paddle for $500 for Heritage Student Scholarships? On this side, starting this time, number 168, 236, 210, 114, 110, did I hear the babies holding up a paddle somewhere? <laughs> there it is, right there, number 247, 223, 141, 101, coming across to this side, 137, 220, 301, 195, 250, 229, 291, 204, 129, 160, 296, 173, 284, 159. All in. Woo! And we are down to the last marker. With aplomb, these paddles will rise at $250. Who here could raise at $250? Number 120. Number 103, way back in the back. 281, 291, 184, 244, 205, 224, 149, 183, 217, 222, 170, 211, 233, 175, 171, and Bertha, 193. Woo! Thank you all for your tremendous generosity. Dennis, coming up with a late okay. breaking announcement. Wait, 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 David. We have the $100 category, the paddle raise. Isn't it in the program? It's in the program, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> But you know what we do here? We do Virginia Hislop's birthday, right? My dear friend, my mentor, and someone really special in all of our lives in this community is turning 105 years old on June 12th. Yes, in just 11 days. So let's all give her a rousting about of happy birthday. Charlie, lead the room. 
Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Ginger. Happy birthday to you. So in honor of Ginger's 105th birthday, we're not raising the paddle for $100. We're raising the paddle. Well, if you want to add an extra zero to the 1005, we can do that. But uh, actually, we're going to raise the paddle for Ginger tonight for $105. And I expect every paddle in this room to go up to celebrate Ginger. So it's going to take me a bit to get through this because David's an auction expert. So give me a minute. Paddles go up. $105 for Ginger. Let's see him. Come on. Let's go. Okay. I'm going to start back here. 249. 240. 2-3-5. 2-2-7. 2-1-9. 2-3-0. Jill, get your arm back up. Are you tired? Gerardo. Gerardo's got two. Two, one, ten. Oh, he's raising it for his brother. Two, eleven, one, three, eight. One, ten. One, fourteen. One, eighty-one. My team, am I going too fast? Yes. Uh, <laughs> one, nine, eight. One zero one. One nine one. One eight six. Thank you, Sharon. Two two three. One three three. One four seven. Oh, Brad. Okay, I see you. Okay. One one five. Two zero three. Two zero eight. One five seven. Thank you, Bob. It's his first time here. <laughs> two five one one two eight two zero one two three one thank you john john's an alumni here from heritage two zero nine one nine four one three seven two two zero one three five oh thank you my friend two six zero three zero one Two five zero one two one one seven six one eight two. Okay, Craig, you can put it down. Thank you. One two zero one two five. Wow, I'm I gotta take a break. <laughs> okay. One zero eight one zero four one eight three. Thank you, Connie. One three nine. One four nine Hillary, you're so tall you almost blocked that one. One nine seven, thank you, Mary Jo. Two forty-four, one ninety-nine, one ninety-six. Whoa, two more just went up. Two eighty-one, two ninety-one. Okay, I'm going too fast for my group, I know. One six zero, two three four. 173, thank you, Abraham. 190, 207, 103, thank you, Bob. Oh, 113, oh, 113, thank you. 2 and 12, 166, 259, 162, 164, 256, 188. Anyone else? It's Ginger's 105th birthday. Who do you know that's 105 years old? Come up here, Ginger. Come up here. We got to keep this going year after year. Think how much extra money we're making with Ginger's birthdays. <laughs> Everybody have champagne? Get your glasses full. It doesn't have to be champagne, just raise your glass. 
Ginger, any wisdom to share with us on your 105th birthday? Only the good die young. <laughs> part of this auction tonight. I've never done this before. <laughs> and um, uh, I'm sure my team is like, you counted way too fast. John, you poured me a glass of champagne, but I forgot to bring it up here. Yeah, no, you're supposed to. Oh, you drink it? <laughs> okay, do I get to say, I get to say a little something here. Okay, some time. Okay. So this is my first time behind the podium at the scholarship dinner, even though I've been doing this for 13 years. So thank you for allowing me to be here. I, I was overwhelmed and thrilled to hear, hear the, the kind words, uh, meaningful words of Bob and, and Rick tonight. So thank you all. Um, I not only want to raise a glass to Ginger, let's do another one to Ginger. 105, wow. <laughs> But I'd like to raise a glass to all of you tonight, to all of my friends, to my colleagues, to all the donors, to all the sponsors, and to the students. The students really mean a lot to me and for allowing me to be a part of all of this. I wanna thank you all for believing in heritage, our mission, and especially in our students. You have changed their lives in unimaginable ways. Thank you, Sister Kathleen Ross, for founding this amazing institution. You are unique, and you have been an incredible friend, teacher, and prayer warrior to me. So thank you. I have been blessed to work here on behalf of the students for 13 years, so thank you for ins the, to the students for inspiring me to do this good work. You have made my job, well, easy. You're the best product I've ever had to sell. <laughs> I've been selling things for my whole life and you are really the best products. To President Sun and the Heritage Board members that I have had the opportunity to work with over the years, um, Thank you. Thank you for believing in this institution and giving us your time, wisdom, and treasure. I have forged friendships through work, this work that will always be important to me, and these friendships will last me a lifetime, so thank you. Special thanks to my friend and mentor, Rick Pinnell. Rick, you were the one who thought I would be a good fit for Heritage, and guess what? You were right. <laughs> the good work we do here is very special. It's a team effort. And my work family lifts, uh, lifts each other up on a daily basis. And we work collectively to support this university, not only on a night like tonight, but all year long. So I want to thank you. I thank my work family, David. Bonnie, where are you? Bonnie, Aaron, Davidson, and Brianna. I love you guys, I really do, thank you. And tonight, we enjoy this special event, this 36th annual Bounty of the Valley Scholarship Dinner. It's been a special event for many years here on campus, but I have to give it a shout out to the university's facilities crew tonight who make this grounds and the buildings here on campus sparkle. We do this for all of you. And to Tim, I don't know if he's in the room, but he's a director of our dining commons, and he manages to keep us all well fed, and he lends his kitchen to our amazing caterers. So thank you, Tim, for all you do to contribute to this event. And to my special friends, John Gasparetti, Brad Patterson, and Randy LaPierre, who for years, who have helped me produce this event with love. 
We do it with love so that we can celebrate the students and celebrate all of you. And last but not least, thank you to my family. Thank you, Rod, Walker, Corinne. Thank you for your patience, <laughs> your encouragement, and your love. I love you guys all so much. My heartfelt thanks. My heartfelt thanks to all of you for allowing me to share this journey with you over the years. God bless. Cheers. Dana, we're going to miss you, and hopefully we'll get to see you in this event uh, even uh, after Next year, time, I'm going to come so. and eat dinner. <laughs> yeah, you can actually, you can, and you can drink. Or I should say you can drink more. That's that. We do limit both Dana and Alex to one glass, really? because Alex will forget her name. And so, okay. As we already right? established. <laughs> Well, I just want to say thank you for your stunning uh, generosity tonight. Um, there's also uh, someone else we would like to recognize. Uh, Lily's uh, family, would you please uh, stand? Um, you're there, there on the I had the pleasure room. of sitting with them during dinner tonight. Yeah, please. Uh, you guys are awesome. Thank you. Thank you. As we mentioned earlier, coming to Heritage, it really is a family effort. and. Uh, you must be so incredibly proud of your daughter. Congratulations. At this time, we would also like to uh, thank some of our sponsors uh, who contribute to tonight's uh, scholarship. Um, We're gonna run through this list. I think our tally is ready, and I know you are almost ready to go. So uh, we're gonna start, uh, Alex. Okay, so we're gonna start by recognizing our sponsors for the night. Uh, presenting sponsors are Legends Casino and Enetai Foundation. In the Platinum can uh, Sponsoring category, we have uh, Cougar Den, Wilbur Orchards, Battelle. In the Eagle Sponsor category, we have John I. Haas, Stokes, uh, Lawrence, Bellican, J. Moore and Shore, Pacific Northwest University of Health Sciences, Larson Gross, and Seattle Children's Hospital. Under the source sponsor category, we have two sponsors that have been supporting this event for 38 consecutive years. And they are Treetop and Hub International. In this category, we also have US Bank, Bayer Boyer Bank, Coca-Cola, Austria Health, Moss Adams, Yakima Valley Community Foundation, Fast Mobile Service. That's my brother. <laughs> Hi, David. <laughs> we also have SNJM, Sisters of the Holy Names, Jesus and Mary. Yakima Chief Hops. <laughs> Multicare Memorial Hospital. Yakima Federal Lab Savings and Loan. <laughs> and Sherbanel Construction. And last but not least, in the gold category, we have the Washington Apple Education Foundation, the Yakima Valley Farm Worker Clinic, Banner Bank, Hanada Agency, and Northwest Communities Education Center, Radio KDNA. Yes. Once again, special thanks to Two Mountains Winery and Traveri Cellars for the generous donation of wine. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you to John Gasparetti and Brad Patterson for the fabulous meal. You yeah. never Thank you. <laughs> and most importantly, thank you for sponsoring and supporting this scholarship dinner. We couldn't do this without you. Thank you all so very much. Awesome. And I think we're ready for the final reveal, are we? Now we would like to invite all of our students to come up 
And if you've been here before, you'll be familiar with this format where we're having our students line up and then we'll count to three and uh, they'll reveal what our final uh, number raised for the night was. So, drum roll. Yeah, I do. Okay, and while they line up, I'm gonna blame, I don't know, Bob maybe, or uh, who else was up here last, but we're missing a page. Um, and we did miss a recognition. Um, as you know, every year, Heritage Team chooses uh, our work from our community that represents both Heritage and our Yakima Valley. And this year, we would like to recognize local artist, Darcy Roberts. Darcy, I know you're here, where are you? Where is Darcy, please stand, thank you. And tonight, we also have uh, another special guest in the audience, Marcia Blevins. Marcia is the artist that created the first original piece of art for this scholarship dinner back in 2013. Marcia, will you please stand? Oh, the back. Thank you. Okay, are we ready for the final number of the night? I'm gonna ask for your help to count to three, and on the count of three, you will all help us reveal the number. Are we ready? One, two, three. Yeah. I can't see it. Hold them up. And that is $803,590. Wow. Wow. Yeah, thank you so much. I think you deserve another round of applause. Thank you. What a fantastic night, everybody. Thank you so much. It's incredible. This is amazing. It's been a pleasure for us to be your MCs tonight. Thank you all, volunteers, students, and staff, and everyone who's made this possible. Thank you all so much. Have a great night, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> And for everyone watching us at home uh, through the live stream, thank you for joining us. Drive safe and have a good rest of your weekend. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.